Today we're running through a full day of bulking and I know what you're thinking, didn't he literally just shoot a video where he talked about his entire bulk? What else more can he explain about grass fed beef? Yes, we did just do a video talking about my bulk but I thought today's video could be a little bit different and we could get a little bit more granular about some of the specifics of my updated diet. Although I did do a pretty comprehensive dive into my diet in the previous video where we discussed a lot of the grocery haul, I wanted to break down some more of the specifics around the macronutrients, the meal timing, the calories, the meal examples, and all that different stuff so that you guys can get a general idea of what a full day would look like rather than just showing you my grocery haul and in some of the foods that are in my diet now. So that's what today's video is gonna be. We're gonna keep it short, concise. We're gonna get straight to the point. You guys are gonna see the meal examples, the meal timing, why I pair certain foods together and the benefits of all of those foods. So let's get into it. Again, before jumping in this video, I wanna preface this and say this is the diet that I've found has worked for me as I've gone into this bulking phase, things that have helped me put on more muscle mass, put on more size, gain weight. Before you go and copy this word for word, meal for meal, calorie for calorie, macro for macro, make sure you do your research, consult with your doctor, and find something that works with you. I've always preached that the best diet is the one that you can stick to for an extended period of time, whether that comes down to bulking, shredding, whatever your goal may be. If you're unable to consistently adhere to that diet, none of the results will come that you're wanting. So you won't get shredded, you won't get bigger, you won't gain muscle mass, you won't put on size, you won't get the girls that you want, and you won't get the guys that you want. So do your research, don't get all your information from one place, there's so many resources out there. Let's get into this video. So let's start with meal number one. This would be considered my pre-workout meal. The majority of my meals consist of very similar things, a lot of grass-fed beef, a lot of fat, and a lot of protein. So the timing of when I put particular foods isn't quite as important as someone who is looking at a fast digesting carbohydrate or some sort of dextrose or some sort of cyclic dextrin or anything of that sort. But there is still some small specifics around fats and small adjustments around fats and proteins that I like to make to make sure that my mood and my energy is optimal throughout my day. So what we've got here is five ounces of grass fed, grass finished lean 8515 gram beef, which is just under 300 calories. One grass fed sausage link, which is 284 calories, two ounces of grass fed beef liver, which is 82 calories, and about half an ounce of beef tallow to cook the liver in, which is 127 calories. So this meal totals out at 790 calories, 61.5 grams of fat, 57.3 grams of protein, and two grams of trace carbs from the liver. As you can tell, it is a fairly substantial meal with a fair amount of fat. I do like putting my biggest meals at the beginning and at the end of the day rather than in the middle since I am only eating three meals and I have to get so many calories in for this bulk. I have up my calories to around 27, 2800 calories and you'll see that as I go through the day but I don't like putting those calories, the majority of those calories in the middle of the day because then I find that I get a large crash from the blood sugar spike since I am having so much in one meal. Now some people do like splitting this up into four or five meals. For me personally, I like having that time between my meals to let the food digest. I just don't find having smaller meals better on my digestive system. Even if I am having a 12 hour window throughout my day, having that extra 12 hours at the end of the day to let the food digest and process before going into another day of 2,800 to 3,000 calories definitely allows me put, to put more of those calories to use. Since I do have about three hours before I hit my morning session around 8 a.m., I'm not too concerned with having a little bit more fat in this first meal, and I have been sticking to closer to 65% fat throughout my days because I've found that that does help me get more of the calories in since fat is more calorically dense than protein is. If you don't know, for macronutrients, it's nine calories per gram of fat, four calories per gram of protein, four calories per gram of carbohydrates. Obviously, you're not going to be able to track every single calorie to the specific decimal, to the specific gram, to the specific point, but if I'm consistently inconsistent over time, as I see my weight increase, as I see my bulk continue to progress, then I'll be able to accurately determine how many calories I'm actually having throughout my day, what my maintenance is, what my bulking calories should be at, what my shredding calories should be at. So I know what you're thinking with this meal, is beef all he eats? And the, and the honest answer is pretty much yes. With a carnivore diet, a lot of the meals that I'm making do consist of a lot of beef, so I do try to find different varieties of beef, whether it's having organ meats, 
or it's having patties or it's having sausages or it's having ground beef having that variety allows me to stay on track with my diet and it also allows me to get more food in because there is such thing as flavor satiation so whenever you have a specific food this can be useful to, for dieting if you have one particular food and eat a lot of that food you're gonna feel satiated a lot faster than if you have a whole different variety hitting a whole bunch of different palates so for me as I'm bulking I want to make sure that I have different varieties of meats and I know this sounds silly so that I'm not having that flavor satiety early on in my day or early on in my bulk when I'm trying to get more calories in. Bulking on a carnivore diet can be extremely difficult because protein is so satiating. So for that reason, whenever I'm going for a specific type of beef, I'll pick the fattier beef to avoid the amount of mechanical satiation that's actually happening. If you don't know when you eat, obviously your stomach will actually fill up and then that will signal to your brain to say that you're full. So if I'm able to decrease the actual volume, the actual load of what I'm eating, then I'm gonna be able to get more calories in throughout my day. It's exactly the opposite of when you're dieting, for example, and you may wanna fill your stomach up with more fibrous vegetables or more or, or foods that are actually physically bigger in size so that the amount of mechanical satiation in your stomach is gonna to signal to your brain to eat less. So for me, the, the smaller the food, the more the fat, the more calorically dense, the better on a bulk. Ensuring that all of my meats are grass-fed and grass-fed finished is extremely important to me because I wanna make sure that I'm getting all the benefits from the extra micronutrients. Grass-fed meats in general are much more packed with bioavailable micronutrients, which means that they're actually going to have an active effect on your body rather than just being flushed through your system, through urination, through waste, and through other things like that. On top of that, the omega-3 profile on grass-fed meats is about five times in comparison to normal grain fed meat. So I wanna make sure that the, the meats that I'm getting, since they are such a large portion of my diet, are the highest quality and have the, have the best possible omega profiles as well as micronutrient profile. Some of the bioavailable micronutrients that are actually in grass fed meats are B3, B6, B12, you got zinc, iron, copper, selenium. Selenium is super important for thyroid health and function, which is gonna help regulate metabolism. So now that we've gone through the benefits and reasoning behind getting grass-fed and grass-finished meats, which is a large portion of my diet, we can move on to the other foods within this meal. So we have these grass-fed sausages. I know these are a little bit processed. As I said, the majority of my diet, it, it does come from beef. So having a little bit of variety, even though it is a little bit more processed, helps me get these extra calories in. Next up is the grass-fed beef liver. We touched on this in the previous video. I talked about the supplements before sometimes that's the supplements are extremely low dose so make sure that if you are taking a supplement instead of having the real thing itself it does have a fairly high dose of whatever the ingredient is that you're actually trying to get in two ounces which is around one serving size if not less you'll get more than a week's worth of micronutrients packed into that into that one serving size and you'll get even a stimulatory effect so that's the reasoning why i put it earlier on in my day to make sure that that stimulating effect isn't going to affect my sleep it also helps me with my alertness absolutely packed with b vitamins zinc copper selenium tons of other micronutrients that are actually bioavailable as i said and because the micronutrient profile is so great you actually get a satiating effect so be careful if you're on a bulk like i am right now I tend to push my liver to the end of the meal so that I'm able to get the rest of the calories in. Here we have half an ounce of beef tallow. This was actually from the beef heart that I cooked up. I'll render it down and use it instead of cooking in seed oils and other oils. Linoleic acid specifically, that's something that you wanna to try to avoid. So if you're able to get beef tallow, they sell it in tubs, I believe. Uh, you can get it actually already rendered down. Here I just have it just cut, sliced straight off of the heart just for visual purposes. I'll have half an ounce of that. That's straight up fat, that's 120 seven calories to add to the meal. So that's meal number one. Let's get on to meal number two. So on to meal number two, this would be considered my post-workout meal and this would happen around 11 or 12 a.m. one to two hours after I finish my training. So here we have six ounces of wild sockeye salmon, which is 247 calories, five ounces of grass-fed grass-finished ground beef, which is 298 calories, three ounces of cow heart, which we cooked up in the previous video, that's 98 calories, and half an ounce of beef tallow rendered down for use in cooking of the heart, which which is again 127 calories. This meal totals out at 769 calories, 49.7 grams of fat, and 80.4 grams of protein. So the obvious standout here would be the beef heart. I know this isn't something that a lot of people include in their diet, but if you haven't, I definitely suggest you do try this or try a supplement of the sort that includes some of the benefits of it because it absolutely 
changed my mood, my energy, how I feel throughout my day, and just the introduction of organ meats in general. Now for the beef heart specifically, I've been throwing in three ounces or so of this a day. I'm more just focused on getting the coenzyme Q10 specifically in beef heart. There aren't a ton of foods that are extremely high in coenzyme Q10. You'll see it in some fishes, you'll see it in the beef liver, but the percentage amount, the dosage that's actually in the beef heart itself is far greater than any of those other sources. One of the main functions of coenzyme Q10 and the purpose of it is synthesis of ATP and use of ATP. Being able to load it up with the beef heart, I know it's not something that's typical. I know it may seem a little bit gross to some of you or a little bit difficult to prepare. I definitely suggest it because you do see a lot of benefits. Next up is the wild caught sockeye salmon. So I do like including some sort of fish in my diet that is high in potassium, especially in my post-workout meal. Electrolytes are something that are always, always, always overlooked and electrolytes are the backbone of every single function in your body, your cells, your neurons, your brain function, your cognitive function, your muscular control. So making sure that you have a healthy balance of electrolytes, so that's sodium, potassium, magnesium, which I'll throw in later on in the day as a supplement, is, is absolutely essential, especially in this bulking phase. Last but certainly not least, more beef. As I said, most of my diet is mostly beef, so you guys can get mad at me about that all you want, but I am eating a carnivore diet, which is majority beef and we threw in five more ounces of that maybe not the most fun but definitely necessary for continuing on my day let's get to the last meal dinner last but certainly not least as you can tell this is the biggest meal of the day i'm not a fan of stacking calories however dinner is always my biggest meal because i find that i am not able to get enough calories in throughout my day here we have two more grass-fed beef sausages which add up to 568 calories a three and a half ounce grass-fed sirloin beef patty 136 calories four extra large pasture raised eggs which are 340 calories and another half ounce of beef tallow to cook the eggs in 127 calories stacking calories to the end of the day oftentimes can lead to overeating or binging so if you're in a dieting phase i don't suggest doing any of that but for me since i'm bulking stack it up baby i'm having all my calories at the end of the day just because i'm trying to fit them in i do like to space this meal three to four hours before i go to bed so that it doesn't have a massive effect on my sleep if you eat too close to bed it can affect your sleep because your blood sugar does spike so greatly i do make sure that my insulin is low when i'm going to sleep as i'm entering the deep sleep phase of my of my sleep which is when all the delta waves in your brain are signaling for your body to recover as well as growth hormone production and thyroid production are at its highest. When insulin is high, your body suppresses the amount of growth hormone and thyroid that your body will actually produce. I did throw in a leaner sirloin beef patty. As I said, it's all about just adding in that little bit of variety. I think this is only about 33% fat, so it is on the leaner side. All of the foods in this meal, same benefits as the other ones. The micronutrients are exactly the same. The grass-fed meats are just as beneficial, so we don't need to discuss any more about that, but we can talk a little bit about the eggs because I haven't discussed my my passion my love for eggs in this video just yet this is a day when my eggs are actually lower and I've been cutting down on them quite significantly recently as I've entered into this bulk phase not necessarily because I'm concerned with the cholesterol in them but I just want to see how my body feels as I shift away from having that much cholesterol. The other thing that's in the eggs that I found that was affecting my mood and causing a little bit of anxiety and irritability was the choline. When I have a lot of choline from having eight to 12 eggs a day, then obviously that's gonna affect my body negatively if I'm having it on top of a pre-workout or a supplement that has choline as well. I've noticed that if I have eggs in the morning and then I'll take a pre-workout supplement that's high in alpha GPC or choline, that it can have a negative effect on my mood and almost cause a, a sort of conflict in irritability that I don't like when I'm training and I don't like as I go throughout my day. So there you guys have it. That's my full day of bulking. We finished the day off with 2,731 calories, 202 grams of fat, 216 grams of protein, and a whopping, whopping four grams of trace carbs. As you can tell, aside from the an introduction of a little bit more organ meats and things like that, my diet has stayed fairly similar to what it was even when I was shredding. This is what I was found works for me. These are the foods that I enjoy eating and can eat on a consistent basis. If you guys did enjoy the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Supplements coming really soon, really, really soon. You guys can get excited about that. 
drop a comment down below what video you'd like to see next. If there's any other videos around cooking, eating, any of that other stuff, let me know and we'll get that up for you guys. Peace.